Today Nikon announced the long-awaited Nikon Z8 mirrorless camera, which sits somewhere between the Nikon Z7 Mark II and the Nikon Z9. And it comes in a smaller body than the Z9, but has many of the features of the Z9. And I was wondering, could this be like the dream camera of a bird photographer? Like a, a worthy successor of the D850, which was one of the most used uh, DSLRs for bird photography from Nikon that I know of. And it's a direct competitor to the Canon R5 and the Sony A7R5. And I was wondering like how good will it be against these? Because in my opinion, at the current date, Nikon has the best lens choice for bird and wildlife photography in general. And the question is, will they also have the best camera now? Obviously, I could not test it myself. So this video is just about some of the specs and my first impressions of the specs, what I think about and where I think this camera could be really a game changer. One thing that clearly sets the camera apart from a Canon EOS R5 or Sony A7R5 is that it features a stacked sensor. The resolution is 45 megapixels or comparable to an R5, a bit lower than the A7R5, but I don't care so much about this. The nice thing about the stacked sensor is that you have no rolling shutter anymore. And this is an issue with most other cameras except for the Canon R3, Sony A1 and Nikon Z9. With the R5, I need to say rolling shutter is not too bad. The sensor readout is fairly quick, so I usually have no problems. I shoot 99% of the time in the electronic shutter, but still I can never be 100% sure. Sometimes with songbirds and flights, I see some distortions in the wings due to the rolling shutter, or with other birds I see when they take off some um, horizontal bending. So it's nice with the set 8 we have our stacked sensor, so this is no longer an issue. This stacked sensor is in a much smaller body than the Z9. It only weighs 910 grams, which is still a bit heavier than the R5, for example, which comes in at around 740 grams. But for me, this would be a welcome reduction of weight. Um, obviously, this also means you don't have the battery grip anymore, which means you might need to change your batteries a bit more often. They are rated to a similar endurance or capacity than with an R5. And this is personal preference in the end, but for me, I prefer a smaller body like the R5 or now the Z8 and changing the batteries a bit more often than always carrying a big chunk of metal. If we look a bit at the layout of the camera, we can also see that it looks very familiar. It looks very similar to the Z9. And um, so unlike Canon, Nikon doesn't seem to try to reinvent the wheel or the camera design or layout, so to speak. And I think that's a good thing because for me with Canon, there was just too many changes lately. I mean, if you come from the R5, the R6 Mark II has a different button layout. The R7 has a different button layout. And this makes it hard to use two cameras in parallel. Like if you want to have your main body and a second camera with Canon, your best guesses or your best option, in my opinion, is just to buy two identical ones because otherwise you need to rethink too much where each button is. And it is very nice that the Z8 and Z9 are very similar in this regard. Let's keep at the body for one moment. The Z8 offers two USB ports, which is kind of interesting. One can be used for charging and the other simultaneously for transferring data. I think that's not so important for wildlife photographers, but maybe more for sports and press photographers. And it offers a full-sized HDMI port, so the type A, which is something I really miss with my R5. Some of the buttons on the back are illuminated, which again is maybe not so important for wildlife photographers, but if you do some landscape photography, uh, some night sky photography, this can be a nice feature. The viewfinder seems to be pretty similar, if not identical to the Z9. This means it has a lower resolution of 3.7 megapixels compared to the 5.7 or something of an R5. However, when I tested the uh, Z9 last time, the resolution was really not that bad. I could see the difference if I switched from the R5 to the Z9 and back, but it, the Z9 viewfinder and now the Z8 is a bit bigger, just the resolution is a bit lower. For me, both were good. However, the key difference to an R5 or uh, Sony A7 R5 
is that the Z8 viewfinder, just like the Z9 viewfinder, offers a blackout free shooting. This means you don't have these black frames or slideshow effect when you pan your camera and for tracking birds in flights, especially the ones that fly a bit more radically, this can really help. Just like the Z9, the Z8 doesn't even have a mechanical shutter anymore, so you can only use electronic shutter. But there is a sensor shield in front that um, comes down when you turn off the camera, so to protect the sensor from dust when changing lenses. And from my experience, this is a much better implementation than Canon's use of the mechanical shutter as a sensor shield, because this was always a bit delayed. If you enjoy bird photography and would like to get better pictures yourself, then I can highly recommend you my new ebook, which covers everything important about the equipment, how you can actually find the birds, how you can play with light, background, different weather situations and so on. So if you're interested, just go to my website. You can find more information there, some screenshots that give you an idea how the book looks like. And of course you can buy it there. The price is around 18 US dollars. And if you're into video, I think the camera looks amazing. Already in the advertisements and announcements, we saw that they put a big focus on this hybrid type of camera with a lot of video features like 8K with 60 frames per second and no record limit, waveforms and so on. Um, but if you're more into photography anyway, so far it sounds like an amazing camera. Are there also some things I don't like so much? A few. Um, first of all, it comes with a CF Express and an SD card slot, just like the R5. Here I just have wished Ken uh, Nikon would have gone a similar way than with the Z9 and offered two CF Express Type B slots, just because this would allow to write the files simultaneously. Of course, you could still do this on CF Express and SD, but then the SD card will just slow you down. And with 45 megapixels RAWs that you take 20 frames per second, SD is not really an option for me. The frame rate is actually the next thing I'm not super thrilled about. 20 frames per second is fast, don't get me wrong, and it's it's plenty fast in 99% of the situations. Just if we see that uh, Canon R6 Mark II, which is much cheaper, offers um, 40 frames per second in RAW, I find it a bit disappointing that the Z8 only comes with 20 frames per second. Of course, you can have 30 frames per second if you go to JPEG, but for me that's often not an option because I need a bit more latitude when, yeah, for post-production. So not a big thing, but I would have hoped that they would increase it to 30 frames per second and maybe do the same for the Z9 via a firmware update. And speaking of JPEG, unfortunately this pre-burst, this pre-shooting is also only available in JPEG and not in RAW as it seems. So if we compare the Z8 against the R5 on paper, the text sheets, um, the specs sheets, if we look briefly, they look quite similar. However, there are some important details that really can make a huge difference in the practice. For example, the stacked sensor, which offers the not having a rolling shutter effect anymore and also offers the blackout free viewfinder. Then there's other things that are not clear yet, like the how well will the autofocus perform? Will it be similar to the Z9? Will it be maybe even better? We will see this in the future. I hope that I can get hands on a camera. We will see. Um, it would certainly help if you give the video a thumbs up, maybe comment below and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.